Shakespeare administration. Every winter for the last 30 years, we've had above average temperatures. Which is to say, in a simpler way, that if you're under 30, you don't know what a normal winter looks like. If you're under 30, you don't know what a, a normal winter looks like. Madam Toastmaster, my fellow Toastmasters, as smart, educated Washingtonians, I'm willing to bet that you're all familiar with the concept of climate change. You're probably familiar with the change that we're ex uh, experiencing worldwide in temperature. You may even be familiar with how that's disrupted the jet stream and why Boston and my former hometown, New York, have been getting buried in snow for the last several winters. And you may also be familiar with sea level rise. You may even be familiar with the fact that small island countries in the South Pacific, like Vanuatu and Tuvulu, are coming up with national evacuation plans because in the next five to ten years, their countries won't exist. But tonight, I'd like to tell you about ocean acidification, something that is so significant that many scientists are calling it climate change's evil twin. And I choose to focus on this tonight because very few people know about ocean acidification. Ocean acidification is defined as the ongoing decrease in pH of the Earth's oceans caused by the uptake of carbon dioxide emissions from the atmosphere. Now what scientists know is about 30% of the CO2 emissions are absorbed by the oceans, lakes, and rivers that are all over the globe. Now, in order for water to reach a chemical equilibrium, this carbon dioxide emissions is reacting with seawater especially and forms a carbonic acid. Now, to give you a little sense of scale, between the years 1751 and 1994, our ocean's pH has decreased from 8.25 to 8.14. Now that may not seem too significant for us humans, but ocean acidification has two effects. The first is that as our oceans become more acidic, organisms that use calcium and calcium carbonate minerals for their structures, these organisms are slowly eaten away by this very acidic water. Think about things like coral reefs. Coral reef bleaching has been happening now for about 10 years, and we see it extensively, especially in places like the Caribbean. So we have this eating away of naturally existing or existing structures, like coral bleaching. But the other side to ocean acidification is that this chemical reaction that happens during ocean acidification ultimately results in a net decrease of carbonate carbonate ions. Now what does that mean? Right? It sounds like a lot of science to me. By not having enough carbonate ions, organisms that build their cells, their homes out of um, calcium carbonate, they can't form proper shells. They can't form proper structure and therefore we have a huge die-off and huge decrease in populations of organisms that have calcium carbonate structures. Now what's a calcium carbonate structure? Shells, exoskeletons, and I don't know about you guys, but some of my favorite things to eat have calcium carbonate structures, right? Mussels, clams, crabs, oysters. And so that is what ultimately brings me to my point and why I think that this topic is so interesting is that Ocean acidification affects us right here and right now. And that's one of the reasons I learned about ocean acidification. About a year and a half ago, John and I went to a talk at Town Hall here in Seattle, put on by the Sightline Institute. And this talk, this whole talk, uh, there were several speakers in the evening that talked about ocean acidification. And the partner, the corporate partner for this talk with Sightline Institute was Taylor Shellfish Farms. You see, here in Seattle and on the West Coast, we have a, a $111 million shellfish industry. 
me say that one more time. On the West Coast, we have a $111 million shellfish industry. And Taylor Farms, as well as a number of farms, uh, shellfish producers here in Washington State, have been unable to have their hatcheries here in Puget Sound because the acidification problem is so bad. Taylor Shellfish about 10 years ago moved their entire hatcheries to Hawaii. So any oyster you get from Taylor started its life in Hawaii because the oyster larvae can't form their shells in the water here in Puget Sound. So I think that's really interesting and it's certainly one of the things that affects us here on the West Coast is economically, but also with all the tasty things we like to eat. Now, I don't mean to be too vociferous, <laughs> but certainly this is something that impacts not just us here in Washington, but impacts the whole world. Climate change is here. We have the evidence for it. So what can we do? What can you do tonight? Well, we know that limiting our carbon emissions start with transportation. Um, about 70% of carbon emissions come from within city limits. So we can do things like alternate modes of transportation, like bicycles, carpooling, or mass transit. And we can also be more efficient with our energy usage. Um, all of those things combined will help limit your carbon emissions and also then help to hopefully limit further repercussions of ocean acidification. Thank you. Madam Toastmaster.